you guys. This is Mr. Millings, and today we're going to learn about accuracy versus precision. So let's suppose we have a target, and what we're going to do is we're going to play some darts. All right. And the object uh, when we play darts is to hit the bullseye every single time. So let's suppose we uh, we're playing some darts here, and in our very first uh, four throws of the darts or the first trial. Uh, we end up with darts that look like this right here. So these darts are very sporadic, right? They're very far apart from one another. And in darts, the idea is to hit the bullseye, to hit dead center. And we notice that these darts are far, far away from dead center here, right? Dead center or the bullseye, right? If we take a look at this dart pattern here, we would say that these darts have low accuracy and low precision. All right, they have low accuracy and low precision. Accuracy, it says right here, is the degree of closeness of a measurement of a quantity to that quantity's true value. So in this example right here, the idea is to hit the bullseye, right? And we can see that these four darts are not very close to the bullseye at all. They are not very close to the true value, in other words. All right, so in other words, how uh, accuracy refers to how close your measurements are to what they should be, right? We're trying to hit the bullseye right here, and we clearly didn't. They are far, far away from the bullseye, right? So we have low accuracy. It says precision right here is the degree to which your repeated measurements of something are close to one another, or in other words, how close your measurements are to each other. So if we suppose that each one of these darts represents a different measurement, these measurements here are far away from one another, right? They're far away from another, one another, so they're not very precise at all. So we would say in this example right here that we have low accuracy and we have low precision, right? We are far away from the bullseye, so there's low accuracy going on right here, and we are uh, far away from one another. These four darts are far away from one another, so we have low precision. Let's take a look at this example right here. If we take a look at this example, once again, we're far away from the bullseye. So we would say that we have low accuracy right here, since the object of darts is to get the bullseye every time and we're far away from that. We have low accuracy. However, these darts are all close to one another. Right? They're all grouped very close to one another. All right, so we have high precision. Let's take a look at this example right here. If we take a look at this example right here, we're pretty close to the bullseye, right? We're pretty close to the bullseye, so we have high accuracy, high accuracy. However, if we take a look still, we have relatively low precision. These darts are kind of far away from one another. So we're going to just say that we have low precision right here. And last but not least, this is what we're striving for in measurement. We want our measurements to be very close to what they should be, right? So we have all four darts in the bullseye. That's where they should be. And also, we want our measurements to be very close to each other. If we were to do four different trials um, measuring something and they all ended up very close to one another, then that's what we're striving for. So in this example here, because these four darts are very close to one another, we have high precision. And if we take a look, we've hit the bullseye every single time, so we have high accuracy right here. All right, so I hope you understand what accuracy versus precision means. Accuracy, it says right here, is how close your measurements are to what they should be or to the true value. And if we take a look, precision here is how close your measurements or your repeated measurements are to each other. So let's apply the concept of accuracy versus precision to a set of data. All right, so let's suppose we have four different lab groups here. And if we take a look at this table here, each lab group has uh, made an attempt or four different trials measuring this metal ball on a digital scale right here, right? So we have lab group one. They've measured this ball four different times on this scale. Lab group two, same thing. Lab group three, same thing. And lab group four, they've all measured this metal ball using this digital scale four separate times. And they've recorded their data in this table right here, as we can see. And what we want to know is we want to take a look at this data and determine the level of accuracy and the level of precision for each one of these groups. Well, if we take a look here, what we've done here, the teacher or instructor or professor has measured the ball. Okay? They've measured this metal ball and they've determined that the actual mass of the metal ball is 30.000 grams. So this right here represents the actual mass or the true value of the mass of this ball right here. And so let's take a look at what the students got. If we take a look at lab group number one in trial one, they measured this ball using the same scale at 23.345 grams. 
trial two is right here, a little closer, trial three a little further away, and trial four very far away. So if we were to take a look at these results here, or the, uh, the data or measurements from lab group number one, we can see that they're not very close to the actual mass of the ball. So we would say that this group has very low accuracy, And if we take a look, how close are these measurements to each other? We have 23, we have 29, we have 21, and we have 18. These aren't very close to one another either. They're very far apart. So we would also say that this group has got low precision. All right, so lab group one, number one would probably fail this assignment or fail this lab if low accuracy and low precision. Let's take a look at lab group Number two, if we take a look at lab group number two, uh, they measured the ball in four different trials. Trial one, they got 30.002 grams. In trial two, they have 30.093 grams. In trial three, 29.995 grams. In trial four, 30.024 grams. If we take a look right here, the actual mass of this metal ball is 30.00 grams. So how close is this answer or this measurement to this actual value of the mass of this ball. It's pretty close. It's very close, in fact. If we take a look, same thing right here. This is also very close to the actual mass of this ball. Same thing with trial three, very close. And once again in trial four, very close to the true mass of this ball. So we would say that this group's got high accuracy. The results here have high accuracy. And let's take a look at the precision. Are the answers or the uh, measurements in each one of these four trials pretty close to one another? I'd say so. We have 30.002, 30.093. They're all very close to one another. So we would say that this or these measurements here have high precision as well. All right, so lab group number two looks like has very high accuracy and very high precision. They'd probably get an A on this assignment. Let's take a look at lab group number three. If we take a look at lab group number three, we have 28.093, 28.123, 27.995, 28.056, right? If we take a look at these four different trials and look at their accuracy, we can see that they're, they're a little bit uh, away from the true mass of this ball, which is 30.00 grams. So we're going to say that these measurements here have low accuracy. And if we take a look at their precision, let's see here. If we take a look at the actual measurements and compare them to one another, if we take a look, they're pretty close to one another. 28.093, 28.123, 28.056, 28.056, they're all very close to one another, one another, so we're gonna say that they have high precision. So lab group number three has got their measurements have low accuracy and high precision, we'll just say. And let's take a look at lab group number four. In lab group number four, we uh, they measured this ball four times, and in trial one, they're pretty close. They have 30.537 grams. Trial two, 30.230 grams. Trial three, 29.859 grams. Trial four, 29.658 grams. The actual mass of the ball, once again, is 30. 0 0.00 grams. So if we take a look at the accuracy, it looks like right here we're going to have pretty high accuracy. These measurements are very close to what the true mass of the ball is. So we're going to say high accuracy for these measurements. And if we take a look at their precision, if we take a look at their precision, let's see here, we have 30.537, 30.230, We've got 29.859, kind of moving further away. Uh, and then, oh, look at this, 29.658, even further away from uh, these two trials right here. So we're going to go ahead and say that these four measurements have low precision. They're not, scientifically speaking, very close to one another. All right, so if we take a look at all the data here and compare the four lab groups, we want to be right here when we make measurements, right? Lab number two, lab group number two, would probably get the highest grade on this little assignment. They have high accuracy, meaning that <clears throat> their measurements are very close to what the actual measurement of this ball is. 
And they're all, all four trials are very close to one another. All four of these measurements are extremely close to one another, so they have high precision. And that's what we're striving for when we're in the lab. We want high accuracy and we want high precision, high levels of accuracy and high levels of precision. So if you liked what you see and you understand what's going on here, go ahead and click that little palm, I'm sorry, that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner. And uh, I hope this was helpful.